Good morning, Jubilee Church World Online. It's really good to see you all. Um, I'm Vernon. If this is a message you might be watching for the first time, and this is... Yvonne. Yvonne. Good to see you all this morning. Just as an introduction to Dave's message this morning that he's sharing in a few minutes' time, wanted to do a few notices and just remind us of a few things that's happening in the church, uh, even though we're not meeting. Uh, in a building, we're still connected online, and this is part of that. The first thing is that I wanted to encourage us, really, to keep meeting online. So whatever platform you're using, whether it's through the the live groups and, and WhatsApp, or if it's through Zoom or Skype or, or any other way, to keep in touch with the people in the church through, through those platforms, um, going forward and and to to really just keep stay connected um, b- because it's it's important uh, the second thing and and probably the most important but tonight on the 19th of April we're having another online prayer meeting uh, with our us as Jubilee Church where we're having a, a prayer meeting so Rick will be sending out those details to everybody um, if it's not the same as last as the last one we had. I'm hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll see how it goes, have a, a song or two that we'll be leading uh, in, in worship as part of that prayer meeting. So uh, we'll, we'll work that into, into the meeting as well. So can I encourage you tonight, the meeting's at 8.15. It's been advertised at 8.15. Um, it takes, uh, sometimes there's a few difficulties with people signing in and stuff. So can I encourage you to start maybe say from 8, 8.05 to try and, and sign into that so that we're ready to go by 8.15 for that prayer meeting. And then the, the third thing I just wanted to um, remind us of before I, I hand over to my lovely assistant uh, is the Good Neighbor Project, the, the helpline that we have that we set up with the local authority to, to help one another. Um, Rick will flash that up on the screen right now. Can I encourage you, if you need any type of contact, if during this isolation period you need any shopping doing, if you need groceries picking up, if you're feeling that you're struggling a bit and, and having a difficult time getting getting you know through the day, please ring, please reach out. You make use of that. That's the reason why it's there. Um, and, and yeah, just uh, we're, you're not alone. We're, we're all in this and we're using every means necessary to stay contacted and stay connected with people. So use that helpline. Um, really want to urge you to do that. So, yeah, I'll um, with that, I'll hand over to Yvonne. Hi, everyone. I just wanted to share with you a couple of passages from the Bible that have been coming to my mind a lot recently, well, in the last three or four weeks of lockdown. This is a very strange time that we find ourselves in. It's not easy for so many reasons, and it's difficult to find any encouragement as we watch what's going on in the world. But I want to remind you that God knows all about it. Coronavirus hasn't taken our God by surprise. He is still supreme, sovereign and reigning over all. In Isaiah 55, verses 6 to 9, he says to us, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. The Lord says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. And then in 2 Corinthians 4, the last three verses that say, Therefore, do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, 
but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Try to be encouraged, people. Coronavirus and its devastating effects will not last forever. Keep your eyes on the things that are unseen. Our hope is in Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. Amen. Amen. So, yeah, guys, hope you have a really good Sunday. Hope you enjoy the meeting. Looking forward to Dave's talk in a minute. And please remember the prayer meeting tonight. Stay connected. Make use of that helpline. And, and yeah, God bless you all. Bye. Bye. Good morning. And welcome to Jubilee Church Online. I hope you're all well this morning and ready to hear the word of God. Um, I'm going to be speaking. My name is Dave Frutcham. We're speaking from Acts chapter 21. So if you want to find that in your Bibles, or perhaps go and find your Bibles, would be a good idea right now. I'm continuing our series, Believers in Action. And my title for this morning is called Locked Out and Locked In. So before I start, I just wanted to uh, ask you a question. Who has heard of King Canute? According to legend, he set up his throne on a beach and uh, because he felt he was so powerful that he could actually turn back the tide, that he could send the waves back, he could stop the sea's progress. But of course he couldn't. And his entourage had to quick make a quick, uh, a hasty retreat, realising the king wasn't quite as all-powerful as he believed. Well, we're here in this passage, we're looking at Acts chapter 21, verse 17. Uh, two attempts uh, are made to hold back an inevitable wave that was coming. Firstly, the church in Jerusalem, who was trying to hold back the wave of opposition against Paul from the, uh, from the Jewish authorities. Uh, and then secondly, the, the Jewish authorities trying to shut out the gospel of Jesus Christ. So let's just uh, set some context where we are in the story. We left Paul a couple of weeks ago on his way to Jerusalem, uh, not knowing what he would face, but warned prophetically that it would probably be uh, opposition and imprisonment. And we had that picture of him being tied with it, uh, that Agabus tying himself with his belt and saying whoever owns his belt would be tied. So that's where we found Paul. Um, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, gonna, not gonna read from verse 17, we're gonna read from verse 27. But I just wanna uh, just set the scene of what's happening. So Paul goes to Jerusalem and he meets with James. Uh, James is the brother of Jesus and seems to be uh, leading the church in Jerusalem at this time. And he meets with James and the other elders and he tells them what's happened since he was last, last there. Um, his ministry to the Gentiles, i.e. the Gentiles are people who are, who are not Jews. They didn't have phones, they didn't have video, they, they couldn't email, they didn't have WhatsApp, they couldn't communicate other than either face-to-face -face or they would send a messenger with a letter. So he's updating the church on what's happened, uh, which we've been reading over these last few chapters. And their response is to glorify God and to be amazed about what's happening. And be, but they also say that there's many Jews coming to faith and these Jews are still very enthusiastic about the law. So they ask Paul to say if he's going to come to Jerusalem and, and make himself public that he needs to follow some ceremonial purification. Uh, this would, and there's four of the men who have got ready for this and he would need to shave his head, he would need to um, pay some expenses and present himself at the temple. Um, the main reason being so people wouldn't point the finger that Paul was against the Jewish nation or the Jewish people, the Jewish faith. So Paul does this and, was very uh, and, it, and when it, it tells when this would be complete. Okay, so we're going to read from uh, verse 27 of Acts chapter 21 and uh, we're reading from the English Standard Version. When the seven days were almost completed, the Jews from Asia, seeing him in the temple, stirred up the whole crowd and laid hands on him, crying out, Men of Israel, help! This is the man who is teaching everyone everywhere against the people and the law and this place. 
Moreover, he even brought Greeks into the temple and has defiled this holy place. For they had previously seen him with Trophimus, the Ephesian, with him in the city, and they supposed that Paul had brought him into the temple. Then all the city was stirred up and the people ran together. They seized Paul and dragged him out of the temple and at once the gates were shut. And as they were seeking to kill him, word came to the tribune of the cohort. So the tribune of the cohort is in charge of the Roman soldiers. He'd be more of a political figure, but he was in charge of the soldiers in Jerusalem. So the word came to the tribune of the cohort that all Jerusalem was in confusion. He at once took soldiers and centurions and ran down to them. And when they saw the tribune and the soldiers, they stopped beating Paul. Then the tribune came and arrested him and ordered him to be bound with two chains. He inquired who he was and what he had done. Some in the crowd were shouting one thing, some another. And as he could not tell and learn the facts because of the uproar, he ordered him to be brought into the barracks. And when he came to the steps, he was actually carried by the soldiers because of the violence of the crowd. For the mob of people followed him, crying out, away with him. So let's pray before I start. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word and we thank you for the encouragement it gives us. We pray just help us this morning as we look at these verses that we would, we would see uh, the, the boldness of the, the apostles and the disciples at this time when they were faced such opposition. And we can use that in our current situation to, to get encouragement and to get strength and to know that you're with us in every situation that we go through. We pray in your precious name. Amen. So I've just got two points to bring today. First one is locked out and the second one is, you guessed it, locked in. Um, so we're going to start with this whole thing about being locked out. Um, Paul faced such opposition and misinterpretation, um, which he knew he would. He wanted to work with the Jews. He wanted to speak into the Jewish life and he wanted them to know the truth. He followed what James had asked him to do in the, the purification. He may not have agreed uh, to this, but he wanted to, to, to keep within the rules that were there and keep within the law. Remember when Jesus came, he said, I, I come to fulfill the law, not to abolish it. But it was God's law that Jesus kept, not man's law. Nevertheless, we also need to follow the guidance of the government unless it causes us to sin, unless it causes us not to be faithful in our belief of Jesus. So Paul is accused of bringing Gentiles into the temple. That's the, the inner part that was just for the Jews. As these Asian Jews, probably who, um, who were probably from Ephesus, uh, and they'd probably seen it, they'd said they'd seen him with Trophimus. Now, it's not a popular name for babies these days. I don't know any Trophimuses, I don't know if you do. But he was from Ephesus too. He's called uh, Trophimus the Ephesian. But he was with him in Jerusalem. They assumed that he'd been in a temple that he hadn't been. And these Asian Jews who caused Paul such problems in Ephesus stirs up, stir up the crowd in the temple with mistruths and opposition, with lies and deceit. And they cause a panic, which is summed up in verse 30 of that passage. Then all the city was stirred up and the people ran together. They seized Paul and dragged him out of the temple. And at once the gates were shut. There was lockdown. There was lockout for the gospel. There was lockout for Paul at this point. Now what you see, the stages of the opposition that Paul goes through. First, we, they see him. They see him. Oh, I heard what he's saying. They just see him. They see him there. Secondly, they cry for help for others. They bring other people involved. They haven't seen him do anything. They've just seen him. And they're crying to get other people involved, get other people on board with their, their issue with Paul. Then they start speaking lies. Fourthly, they seize Paul. They drag him out of the temple. And then finally, in this symbolic act, the Jewish rulers shut the gates of the temple and locked Paul and the gospel out. 
They crucified Jesus and his message and his gospel and his followers increased and spread. They stoned Stephen. The church scattered, but it grew and it spread. Now they're seeking to kill Paul. But actually there's an inevitable wave that the, the gospel cannot and could not be stopped. It's going right across Asia into Europe and eventually it will, will come to our shores in the UK. So we, meet, we might feel locked out, but the gospel cannot be stopped. You cannot lock out the gospel. We've faced some, some examples, you know, some little stories of, of opposition. Now, we, we certainly haven't had persecution. We've never been beaten. We've never been abused in that way. But there's been rumours about us. Uh, when we uh, opened a coffee shop at, at Jubilee One to One, um, one of the estates said there were rumours that we were there to make money out of the people. Um, and that we were there to take over the community centre. Um, and actually, we invested quite a significant sum into refurbishing the shop that we were leasing uh, and to be able to open it. And then also, we never made a profit out of anything that we sold. It was always, uh, it was always a cost. There was, we weren't there to fleece people, we were there to serve people. It was a ministry, not a business. And secondly, when we came to the Jubilee Centre, a rumour was spread that we'd bought the pond next door as well, the captain's pit, and that we were going to fill it in and then build a car park on top of it. Again, complete untruths. And then the third one, more amusingly, that we were bribing children to come into the church with smarties. All of these things are not true. But if you click on the link at the end of the preach, we'll send you a free Easter egg. Only kidding. But we do have to speak within parameters. We are not here to offend, but sometimes we'll offend. We are here to love, but sometimes people will feel unloved. We're here to save people, but sometimes people will feel condemned. We have to set out with good intentions, with the right heart, and follow the Holy Spirit. It says in Matthew 5, 16, In the same way, let your light shine before others, so they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. So we need to set out with the right intention. We're not out to offend. We're not out to, to be uncaring. We're not out to, to put people off. We're, not out, we're out to include and love people as best we can. In this current situation that we all find ourselves in, we're basically locked out of our building. We'll stop from meeting there, uh, but it's not going to stop us meeting together. It's not the same, and it's not ideal by any stretch of the imagination, but it is possible for us to do a lot of things on video with, uh, different, uh, with different formats. It's possible for us to send messages, to ring each other, to communicate. And I think there's been a building of uh, better relationships among some people across the church, but Please make use of those things, whether it's YouTube, whether it's the Facebook pages, whether it's being in a WhatsApp group, uh, whatever it is, just messaging people. You, you, you take the responsibility to phone or communicate with someone else. Don't expect everyone to communicate with you. Just one person. That's all we all need to do is communicate with one person. You need to quite keep doing it. We'll, we'll over as, as leaders, we'll try and do a bit more over this time. We'll tr we're trying to get better. We're trying to uh, produce better quality in what we're doing. Uh, but it, it's not easy. We're not experts and we're certainly not professional. So we'll do our best. Just one other thing, just an update on, on what we are doing, even though we're locked out. We've set up this helpline uh, and, and an email address and... Um, Initially, we just did that uh, amongst the church, but actually now we've started to release it. We've, we've, it's on a, a council website, the Wirral Info Bank, we're on there, so if people want help, they can get it from, they can communicate through that. And also we've done a leaflet drop around the, 
and two outreach areas that Graham had organised over the last couple of years and we, we dropped some leaflets around there on those houses to anyone that needed help that we were here to do shopping for them, to whether it's collecting prescriptions or uh, uh, whether it's just a phone call they need. Um, and actually that our, our promise is that we say we're not looking for them to pay for those things. We want to we want to bless them, we want to be generous in what we're doing. So secondly, it's been locked down. Secondly, we're locked in. The apostles throughout the book of Acts are arrested and told not to speak of Christ anymore. Then they don't ever really listen. They keep on speaking powerfully of what God is doing. There are accounts of beatings and imprisonments. And it, these should be a source of encouragement to us. God can work powerfully through imprisonment. We are, and we've got to start learning to trust him more. If we go right back to the start of Acts uh, in chapter 4, verse 19, we see Paul's, uh, sorry, Peter's response to being told not to speak or teach in the name of Jesus. He says, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you or rather than to God, you must judge. For we cannot but speak of what we have seen and heard. Peter and John's response was that you can't keep a silence because we've seen amazing things happen. And for us too, we need to sense what God has done in the past. We need to keep pressing forward with faith. We need to see with the eyes of faith and not with our actual eyes. Now we are currently forbidden from speaking. We're not currently forbidden from speaking in the name of Jesus. We're currently forbidden from, from meeting uh, well, well, and, and so are all other groups. We're, we're forbidden from meeting because of health reasons. So this is not opposition in the same way, but it is a hurdle and it is a, it is a problem for us. But we have so many ways to communicate. But what we can trust is that God's gospel is powerful and just like the waves on a beach, you can't hold it back. Paul says in his letter to the Romans, probably writing it around this time on his way back from, from Asia and from Greece, he says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith. As it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. And again, when the apostles are arrested in Acts chapter 5 and the council are discussing what to do with them. This is what one of the Pharisees says and he backs up this point. He says, so in the present case I tell you, keep away from these men, that's the apostles, and let them alone. For it is, if it, this plan on this undertaking is of man, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You might even be found opposing God. So they took his advice and when they called in the apostles, they beat them and charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. And then just listen to the response of the, the apostles. We might feel afraid. We might feel upset, let down at that point. But they, when they let them from their presence, they went rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonour for the name, by the name of Jesus. And every day in the temple and from house to house, they did not cease teaching and preaching that Christ is Jesus. So actually, we, they can't take that away from us. We won't be able to stop us meeting, getting together, encouraging one another. But they can't stop us preaching and teaching that Jesus is the Christ, that he's the Messiah. He's the one that's all powerful. Now, the last thing I want us to remember, and I'm bringing us to a close here, is that when Paul and Silas are locked in prison in Philippi, and they're just, obviously, you know, they're just like us. They're just moping around the prison, feeling sorry for themselves. Oh, no, they're not, are they? Actually, if you read the passage, they're praying at midnight and singing hymns. They're locked up. They're chained up. They're, they're, they're imprisoned. But they're still able to pray and to worship. And then suddenly an earthquake opens all the doors. But nobody runs away because the power of God is present. And then the jailer is not only saved from death, he's also saved from his sins. 
So we can keep praising God through this season. We can keep worshiping, we keep praying. We'll see next week what happens to Paul uh, after he's arrested at this point. Helen O'Brien's going to speak next week and she's going to look at the next passage. But let me tell you this one thing that I know is that Paul is not going to be silent about Jesus once he's arrested. Okay, so just in conclusion, let's, let's take some encouragement from these passages. That even in our time of lockdown, of lockout, even when we were shut out or shut in, we can, uh, we can still preach and teach the gospel. We can still encourage people with the faith. We can still worship God. Even when we're opposed or misunderstood, we should seek to keep believing God and what he has done and keep obeying him. We can still be effective for the gospel. We are part of an inevitable, inevitable, it's difficult to say, wave of God, which can't be stopped. So let's keep praying, let's keep praising, and we'll see God come through. Amen. Just going to pray and then close. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this time. We thank you that we are part of this inevitable wave that cannot be stopped, that the gospel is power all on its own. So we, we pray you help us, help us to have a right focus at this time that we can keep praying and praising and be effective for your gospel. For anyone who's feeling discouraged, we pray that you'll encourage them today, that they know that you're with them. And I pray this in your precious name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. God bless. Enjoy your day. Hello and welcome to Jubilee Flames Kids. Flames Kids. Flames Kids. Yeah, we've so, got all kinds of things today. Yeah, we have. We have a Bible story. Yes. Prayer. Prayer. Craft. Oh, yes. Hang on. Yeah. We've got this, which is Jesus going up to heaven. But also, oopsie, a funky game. Find out more soon. <laughs> what else have we got? Hopefully better than this. <laughs> um, news, of course. Oh, we've got some great news coming up. Yeah. yeah and, um... and then we've got an amazing quiz right at oh, the yeah, end. Oh, yeah. A quiz. And who is it going to be here? Is it going to be me? Who's going to get flowered? And we have two, maybe three helpers coming to help us today. Yeah, so I'm Chantal. And I'm Rick. Welcome. And we have a very special guest. <laughs> Welcome. Jubilee Flame. Let's go. Come along. Let's go. So this is our new, this is our news. So who's this, Matilde? What? Who's this? Cashew. And this is our new doggy, isn't it? Mm-hmm. What colour is she? Black and white. Where's her, can, do you know where her white bit is? In, under here. Mm, that's right. <laughs> and what do we do with Kashi? We play with her. Yeah. Do we, does she stay in the house all day? No. What do we do? Go in the woods and, and find a den. That's right. And and is Ka is Kashi very, very slow? No, she's very fast. What does she like doing? Um I don't know. <laughs> does she does she like walking very slowly around the field? No, she likes going very fast. <laughs> she's a very fast dog, isn't she? Yeah. And we throw a ball for her as well, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to take my socks off. Okay, that's fine. So this is our new dog, Cassie. She's a lurcher. So she's half greyhound and half lab. And you're very lovely, aren't you? Yes, you are. She's sniffing. Hello, Hannah. So what have you been doing during this lockdown? Um, this week I've been helping make masks and visors to help people not get the cough. Wow, that's amazing. So where have you been doing that? In your bedroom? No, in school. Ah. But making sure that we stay two metres apart. 
Social distancing. Yeah. That's great. Bye right then, Hannah. Thank you. So today is Ascension Sunday. So we're going to find out in the story, in the Bible story, all about what is what is it about? What does it mean? Do you know what Ascension means? No. No. So we're going to read the story and find out. Jesus goes back to heaven. Jesus and his friends are walking to the top of the of a mountain. It is called the Mount of Olives. The Holy Spirit will come soon, Jesus tells them. Then you will tell people everywhere about me. Jesus' friends listen carefully. Then Jesus lifts his hands. He says some good things that will happen to them. Suddenly, Jesus begins to rise up. His feet leave the ground. He is rising up towards the sky. Jesus' friends watch. They're very surprised to see this happen. They watch Jesus go all the way into the sky. He goes all the way back to heaven. Suddenly, two angels are standing there. Jesus has gone back to heaven, they say, but he will come back someday. You will see him come down from heaven the same way he went Ow! up. Won't that be exciting? Yeah. Have we lost Jesus? What do you mean, have we lost Jesus? Well, don't be sad, Matty. Jesus isn't lost. Jesus, has got, he's gone back to heaven. Yeah. But he's sent the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> he's sent the Holy Spirit, and it's not the dog. The Holy Spirit it, it comes and lives in us. So Jesus is with us all the time now. You know what's in you. Have I? <laughs> okay. <laughs> So Matilda has just asked a really good question. Where has Jesus gone? He died and he rose from the dead and then he went back to heaven. Well, one thing we know is that Jesus sent his Holy Spirit, which means he's come to live within us. He's come to live in our lives. So let's pray and thank Jesus that he's going to be, always be with us because he sent his Holy Spirit. Jesus, thank you that even though you went back to heaven, you sent your Holy Spirit. Thank you for your love and your power that I can know every day to change the world around me. Amen. So now we're going to do a craft. So this is, this is what we're going to do. So this is heaven. <laughs> And this is Jesus, either bungee jumping or going up to heaven. And then, and, and it turns into a game as well. Hey. Yay! Hole in one. Well done, Let's Hannah. Oh. Let's go over. So um, Matilda's over there waiting to make it. Yay! Hello. So we've got like a little craft that you can do if you'd like to. Are you ready to do some craft? Mm -hmm. So this is what you need. You need a, a cup. It can be a paper one or a plastic one or even a yoga pot. Or, or even a toilet roll if you want, but you'd have to, if you had a toilet roll, you'd have to cover the bottom of it. So we've got this cup and some kind of glue. We've got like PVA type glue, but you could use like maybe prick stick or whatever glue you've got. Um, so I've got like a little glue spatula. You need some kind of string, or if you haven't got a string, you could add wool or garden string or whatever you've got, that kind of thing. Um, a pen, some kind of peg, preferably like a wooden one so that you can draw on it. Um, a pair of scissors or just something sharp because you're going to put a hole in the bottom of the cup. And then some kind of cotton wool, so whether that's like bits of cotton wool or we've got like little cotton wool pads here. You just need a few of them, don't need, don't need too much. So that's the kind of craft that we're going to make. And um, it's going to be a bit like a game, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now it's time for us to do our quiz, and there are two contestants today. We have Rick, Woo! and we have Chantal, with Yay! her Woo! trusty assistant. Oh. Oh. 
first question is for Chantal, and it is, when Jesus entered Jerusalem during his triumphal entry, what was he riding on? Was it A, a horse, B, a camel, C, a, a donkey, camel. or D, a chariot? That's a donkey. Yay, I think it was a donkey. That is the correct answer. Yay! <laughs> now, Rick. How many times did <laughs> did Peter deny Christ? Was it A, two times, B, three times, C, one time, or D, four times? Ooh. What was B? Three times. B. <laughs> that is the correct answer. You trying to cheat? No. <laughs> Chantal? Oh, it's our turn. You ready? Mm-hmm. This is a tricky one. What was the name of the high priest's servant who had his ear cut off by the disciple Peter? Oh was it A, Malchus? Was it B, Alexander? Was it C, Matthew? Or was it D, Rufus? I have no idea. Oh, well, let's go for A. Whatever the A was, Mal, Mal something. That is correct. <laughs> Woo <Woo-hoo>! Yay! Woo! <laughs> now... Um, what was the Jewish feast being celebrated the week Christ was crucified? Was it A, Pentecost, B, Passover, C, First Fruits, or D, Unleavened Bread? D. Incorrect. Oh. <laughs> Chantal? It was Passover. Yes. Yep. Another question? Matthew, don't do that. Please look me. Good what did the soldiers mm. offer Jesus to drink while he was on the cross? Was it A, fruit juice, B, water, C, vinegar, or D, wine? Ah. Oh, was it wine or vinegar? Vinegar. I'll go for vinegar. That is the correct answer. Yay! Woo! Now, Rick. For how many pieces of silver did Judas betray Christ? Was it A, 10, B, 20, C, 30, or D, 40? 30. That is correct. Ooh. Yes. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> Chantal? Yes. Who carried the cross for Christ? Was it A, Simeon, B, Simon Ooh. Peter, C, Simon of Cyrene Ooh. or D Thomas. Oh, which which Simon was it? It was one of the Simons. I uh, think it was. I think it was Simon of Cyrene or C, 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 Simon of Cyrene. That is correct. Yay! Yay. That, you're doing very well. Yay! Woo! Rick's gonna get flowered. Rick's gonna get <laughs> flowered. What <laughs> colour? was the robe that the Romans placed upon Jesus. Was it A, purple, B, green, C, yellow, or D, brown? Definitely yellow. Oh, that's just that is your favorite incorrect. color. <laughs> we have a winner. <gasps> oh no! Yes. The person who does not win gets flowered. <gasps> the winner is Chantal. Yay! So that Yay! means Yay! Rick getting flowers. This is your prize for losing the quiz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Yay>! <laughs> oh, happy Bye. Bye.